Okay, now we're going to further explore troubleshooting a situation where you've got low power, and it's going to take us all the way up to the roof. We're going to look at a disconnection between optimizers. So let's see how we would investigate that, okay? We always begin with our questions. What's the status on our display? We see that we have some power, and we have steady green light, so we're exporting power. So green light steady, system is producing power. Well, let's keep going. Is the power output below what's expected? And remember, if we click on the question mark for more info, we can read all about the calculation. You can do that on your own. Find that with the assumptions we built in, that we expect the output power to be 3,000 watts. If we take a look at the display, though, we have 1,500. So we are below expectation. So is the power output below? Yes. Now, is the power one half of what's expected? As we've talked about before, that's a critical question to ask because in our case, we have two strings. So if half the power is being displayed, we're very suspicious that it has to do with one string versus another. And in this case, yes, it's exactly half of what we'd expect. So we're going to say, is the power up at half? Yes. So now we're going to proceed. We turn the inverter DC switch off. So we can see the switch here. Turn it to the off position. Take off the cover. First thing we want to check to see is if some of the wires here are disconnected. That would be one way for one string to be out of commission, but we see that all the wires look pretty good. Everything's connected. So are any wires disconnected? Nope. So we proceed now to check currents. And we come up with our multimeter, which is presented to us. I'm just going to touch on it and move it over here to the side. Notice that the multimeter already comes up for you, being set to DC amps. If it wasn't, you would turn the knob until you got to DC amps. We've set it for you. What we want to do is turn the DC switch back on to establish power to our circuits. So I'm going to click that back on. Notice up above that we have our power back on. And then I want to measure the current flowing in the strings to try and identify where we have our loss of current. Before we do that, let's look at the more info note here. And pretty much explains what we're looking at. We're going to use the clamp feature of the multimeter to measure current flow by touching the tip of the multimeter to move it and to make the measurements. The idea is that if we have 1500 watts of output and the manufacturer says that the nominal operating voltage is 350 volts, you divide and you get 4.3 amps. Let's see what we find. We're not going to use the probes on either side. We're actually going to use this tip of the multimeter, the clamp on tip. And we're going to touch the tip to the wires to measure the current. I'm going to press down move it around. I have this phantom to move around here. I'm going to come around here. If I get it connected, string 1, I see that that's reading 0 amps. Now if I move it, I bring it up here to connect to string 2, ah, I get my 4.3, which matches the 1500 watts, right? So it looks like all of that 1500 watts that I'm getting is coming in one string, string number 2, and I'm getting the 4.3 that would correspond to 1500. If I touch the tip and move it again, I take it to my string 1, I get 0 amps. So I've identified the problem. I'm going to take this back and just let go, put it back on my tool. So we've identified the fact that it's string 1 that has 0 amps flowing. So there's a problem with string 1 of my circuit. So I've identified that now. So I'm going to proceed. I can identify that string 1 has 0. I teleport up to the roof. First thing I want to check is to look closely at my wiring, whoops, at my junction box. I want to see are any of the MC4 connectors loose or disconnected at the junction box. Well, no. They all look just fine. They're all connected together. My string 1 and string 2 are connected. So that's not the source of my problem. Ah, so I have to look further. So I say no. And I teleport under the array. I'm going to move back. And I find a problem. I'm beginning to look. Is there a break in the series connection between optimizers? First thing I want to look at. 
And the answer is apparently yes. I can rotate a bit here. We can see that the top wire is going from one optimizer. And if I look over here, I'm going to move myself over a bit. Slide myself over. Notice that the top wire is coming from the other optimizer here. I'm going to move myself back. So, I've found my problem. Is there a break between optimizers? Yes. Okay, fault found. I want to connect those together. I'm going to click my more info note just to see what it says. It explains, right, that the optimizer series string was broken. So there was only one half of your expected power because you were only getting the power from string two and not anything from string one. So I want to touch on the connector to reconnect it, and that's it. Now I've found my fault and made my correction. And if I slide over here a bit and go over here to the bottom right hand, I can click on my teleport options. It's kind of fun to do that. I can go back down to my solar edge inverter, take a look at that, and indeed, I can notice that I'm back with my full power instead of half because now I've reconnected the other string. So I've solved that problem. Hey, thanks for watching the training video using Interplay's simulation based training program. You can keep watching our solar videos by clicking on the link to your left or stay up to date on our latest solar snacks by subscribing on your right. To learn more about how the STP provides critical team training and helps you build an onboarding program at your company, please go to interplaylearning.com.